In this video, we'll learn why we use XLR as the standard connector for recording and how to denubify your cable rolling technique. You can find XLR cables and connectors on many professional audio devices, including all types of microphones for recording and stage use. When someone asks why you should use an XLR, two things immediately come to mind. They're capable of delivering the 48 volt phantom power that's needed to power condenser microphones. And the second thing that comes to mind is that they're so-called balanced cables. This balanced wiring allows us to cancel out interference that's being picked up along the way. Let's check out how that works. Here we have an instrument cable that you can use, let's say, to connect your guitar to a guitar amp. It's the perfect uh, example of an unbalanced cable. Each wire inside the cable has its own contact point. One is for the signal and one is for ground. In the case of an unbalanced instrument cable, it's the tip and the sleeve. That's why we call them TS cables. Any interference picked up along the signal path will stay in the signal. An XLR cable is a so-called balanced cable. A balanced cable has three wires and contact points. Pin one is the ground wire, and pin two and three are for the signal. Two and three both carry a copy of the signal, but with reversed polarity. Why? Now here comes the cool thing. What happens when you sum two signals with reversed polarity? The signals are cancelled out. And just like if you would combine plus one and minus one, it would equal zero. That's exactly what happens, but only to the interference that's introduced via the cable along the way. The audio gear on the receiving end flips the polarity in order to leave the original signal intact, cancelling out any electrical interference. And that's the great thing about XLR cables. But XLR connectors have another advantage. They have a nifty little latch. The latch on the XLR connector is great. It prevents accidental unplugging. We constantly receive messages from people asking us what makes a good XLR cable. Well, a good cable is one that fits your purpose. And there are three easy things that you should keep in mind, perhaps when choosing an XLR cable. First, we can't stress this enough. Make sure that the connectors are of good quality and not the cheapest you can find. You can have great cable, but if the connectors suck, you won't have a reliable relationship with your XLR cable. And we all want something to rely on. Second, make sure that your cable length is suitable for your recording purpose. If you're recording at home, you'll most likely need three meters maximum. Trust me, if your cables are too long, things might get messy quickly. Lastly, you don't have to buy the most expensive cable in the store. They won't sound better. You could even say that some cable products are a total scam. It's true. If you want proof, Get your friend to set up a blind test and let us know if you can actually consistently hear a difference. You might have noticed that XLR looks a bit like an abbreviation, but what does it stand for? Well, here's a thread from Reddit on the subject. It's something I've never thought about before. I was just involved in a conversation where two were disagreeing, so I turned to Google to solve it, but Google doesn't seem clear on it either. Here are some of the contenders. External, line, return, Canon X series latch rubber, X latching resilient rubber, X ground, LR left right. What's your guess? In my opinion, some of these answers really make sense, especially the last one. But according to the Audio Engineering Society, it's actually a registered trademark of Canon from 1958. The original model number series for Canon's three-pin circular connectors invented by them is now an industry generic term. The problem was that it had no latch. Canon rearranged the pins and added a latch, and the XL X series with latch was born. Later, Canon modified the female connector end to put the contacts in a resilient rubber bound, and they called this version the XLR series. Now that's a great pickup line, or... I'm going to show you a little trick now. It will help you to gain the respect of professional sound engineers. Not only that, but you'll actually feel better about yourself as a person. I'm going to show you how to roll your cables correctly. How you roll your cables tells a lot about who you are as a person too. So do it right. And here's how it's actually done. You hold your cable here like this. You define the length of your circumference and you bring it up to meet your hand. With each iteration, you twist the cable to make sure that any slack is not occurring. Continue 
until the end. And hopefully you should have a perfectly circle as such. Thanks for watching. We hope you had fun. Hit like and subscribe. If there's anything that you would like us to cover in the future, please let us know below. Until next time, make yourself hurt.